Good evening. Coming up in Mellow TV Evening News tonight, deadly heist in Portmore leaves armored vehicle security guard dead and robbers making off with $10 million. Vehicle accident over the weekend leave eight persons dead and government and the private sector sign agreement to assist persons to register their land. And now the news in detail. A man was shot and killed at the intersection of Strand Street and Church Street Lane in Montego Bay, St. James, around 2 p.m. today, Monday, February 27. Up to news time, no motive has been established by the police for the shooting. The identity of the deceased is still unknown. Investigations are ongoing. And Melo TV will bring you more on this latest shooting in St. James in subsequent newscasts. Three persons died in a car accident on Sunday, February 26, along the Stewart Town Main Road in St. Mary. Dead are Sadika Feathersing, whose address is unknown, 30-year-old chef Kishane Richards of Clonmel in the parish, and 29-year-old taxi driver Sidney Kondapa of Highgate. According to the police, Kondapa was driving his Toyota Probox motor car from Ocheria to Port Maria when at around 7 in the morning he lost control and crashed into a highest minibus traveling in the opposite direction. The victims reportedly had to be cut free from the wrecked vehicle by firefighters after the car ended up in a ditch. Sidney Kondapa later died at the Port Maria Hospital while Richards and Feather Singh were declared dead at the accident scene. And as the authorities processed the accident scene in St. Mary, they were called to another crash site on Sunday, this time in Golden Springs, St. Andrew. The police are renewing their appeal to motorists to utilize the roadway with due care and caution. The appeal comes following a collision that resulted in the deaths of five young men on the Golden Spring Main Road in St. Andrew. The deceased, who are all of St. Andrew addresses, have been identified as 20-year-old Tejay Murray, 18-year-old Anthony Fuller, 20-year-old Raheem Campbell, 24-year-old Jamie Marriott, and 17-year-old Ramario Moody. Reports from the Stony Hill Police are that about 10 p.m., the men were traveling on three motorcycles towards Temple Hall. The drivers reportedly lost control of the vehicles and collided with a Toyota Hyatt that was traveling in the opposite direction, causing it to overturn. The police were summoned and the driver of the Toyota Hyatt was taken to hospital where his, he is being treated. All occupants of the motorcycles died on the spot. In other news this evening, two men were shot, one fatally by the police during a pre-dawn operation in Negril, Westland on Monday, February 27. The incident took place shortly after 4 a.m. on the compound of a supermarket in Cambio in the town. One of the men identified as Delon Romario Harding was pronounced dead, while the other, a 28-year-old security guard of a St. Elizabeth address, is being treated for his injuries. The matter was reported to the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, and the JCF's Inspectorate and Professional Standards Oversight Bureau. Meanwhile, over in Portmore, St. Catherine, a mid-morning fatal shooting left a security guard dead and two others injured and gunmen making off with nearly $10 million in cash. According to reports, individuals driving a white Subaru motor car pulled up while security guards employed to armored security company Beryllium were reportedly delivering cash to an automated teller machine at the Portmore Pines Plaza in St. Catherine. As the guards approached the ATM, two men got out of the car and started shooting at them with high-powered weapons. In making their getaway, the gunmen took two bags from the guards that contained cash. Following today's tragic shooting and robbery, Senior Superintendent of Police Christopher Phillips, who is in charge of the St. Catherine South Police Division, is urging security companies to reassess their courier operations. Uh, just confirming that we indeed had a robbery here this morning, 902 to be exact. Um, three security guards from Beryllium were delivering cash to the Jane Bank of Portmore Pines when they were attacked by men traveling in a white Subaru. Um, these men were armed with high powered weapons. Uh, I think, you know, they never had much chance. Um, 
the winter, they made escape with two banks. We estimate that's over $10 million that they managed to escape with. Um, one security guard has seen succumb to his injuries. The other is in surgery, as we speak. I believe the female was a part of it. Um, the third security guard wasn't um, seriously injured. My initial assessment of it is that I would make a serious call to the companies that are doing um, courier services to review their operations, review their tactical maneuvers, um, review their numbers in terms of these kind of transactions, and to look on the type of people they are using. Head of Communication at the Guardsman Group, Lieutenant Commander George Overton, extended condolences to the family of the slain security guard. This morning, Beryllium Limited had an unfortunate incident in Portmore Pines Mall, where one of our trucks was attacked by armed assailants. Uh, in the attack, um, three of our crew members of the vehicle were injured. One was shot fatally. Uh, the other two are at hospital receiving treatment. Um, we, we, we are very saddened by this incident at this point in time. Um, we extend our condolences to the family of the deceased um, member of staff, and we wish our other two crew members a speedy recovery. In the incident, um, cash was lost. The investigation is ongoing. We are corporate, cooperating with, fully with the police in this matter and we hope that we'll be able to bring the perpetrators to book not too far from this. A significant lawsuit against a blogger and entrepreneur, Shelly Ann Curran, has been filed by the legal team of Mark Crosscray, the former CEO of Stocks and Securities Limited, SSL. A claim for aggravated damages by Crosscray is based on allegations arising out of a YouTube video, three Instagram posts, and three Twitter posts, published by Quran, which indicated Crosscray is, quote, a fugitive of the law, end quote, on or about January 23, 2023, and Quran has not complied with orders to have the alleged defamatory content removed. Monique Morrison, attorney for Mark Crosscray, asserted that her client was not responsible for or connected to the allegations of fraud against SSL. The National Land Agency and the VM Foundation have established a grant of $30 million to help eligible persons survey their land as a first step in their application for a registered certificate of title. The initiative will involve land parcels in St. Catherine, St. Thomas, Portland, St. Mary, and sections of Kingston and St. Andrew. The partnership between the NLA and VM Foundation will run for three years and is anticipated to provide assistance for 400 beneficiaries. Speaking at the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding, Prime Minister Andrew Holness welcomed the initiative and explained the process. It will flow through the government process, but the beneficiaries uh, will be selected through a very transparent process and it will be beneficiary driven. So the government is not going to select anyone specifically. Uh, people can apply. Uh, just to give some detail, so I go back to my script, and just so that we get it right. So the program, the program will help applicants secure a registered certificate of title for their land and is expected to assist over 400 beneficiaries. Eligible applicants with a single parcel of land not exceeding five acres may request a maximum of $75,000 as a grant, not a loan, as a grant, to assist with offsetting the cost to survey their parcels. Now, that's a big help. So for Group President and Chief Executive Officer of the VM Group, Courtney Campbell, noted that Jamaican deserves the best. The single most important source of funds for new businesses in the U.S. is a mortgage on the entrepreneur's house. 
When these assets are formal formalized in this way, the borrower can establish a credit history, and it is a more solid basis for reliable and universal public utilities. We believe in VM that our people deserve no less. And so through this partnership with the NLA, the VM Foundation is aiming to empower approximately 400 families, at least, to achieve financial well-being by injecting life into their assets and helping them to unlock capital to educate their children, to expand their farms and other businesses, and to improve productivity by upgrading technology. And those are the stories making the news this evening. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News. I'm Nicole Hales. Stay safe and thanks for watching.